Good afternoon, or good morning, rather, sorry. <laughs> I was about to say, I bring apologies from uh, Andrew Sansip, Vice President for the Digital Single Market in the European Union. He can't be here today. He's in Korea, unfortunately, so you have to make do with me. You can go back to Paul and ask for your money back afterwards, but maybe you wait until I've done my speech, and then you can start asking for the money back. Now, second thing is I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. This is very important to us to be here today and to talk to you about culture that matters. Culture and digital are intimately linked. They're both about innovation and bringing new experiences, even solutions, to our society. They are linked by nature, but also by necessity, as all parts of society are increasingly going digital. Paul earlier said that this is not a fashion trend. We completely agree. And my first point today is this. Digitization and offering culture digitally are essential factors for the continuation of culture and cultural production. Some figures that gives us a little bit of a perspective on digitization, technology, and culture. The German digital library that is nicely exposed over here holds six million works. The French National Audiovisual Institute, INRA, makes available around one million hours of TV and radio and had around 100 million views on their site in 2014. Europeana, doing excellent work, which is, by the way, our first port of call when it comes to digitization. Europeana, doing excellent work in this area, is Europe's digital library, and it gives direct access to more than 53 million digitized books, audio and film material, photos, paintings, manuscripts, and documents. So besides the values and more of many benefit it brings, culture is also an important part of the economy. Simply put, culture creates jobs and growth. In the EU, we are looking at nearly 7 million jobs in the creative sector, mostly in small businesses, and around 4% of GDP. Some more figures. Since 2006, iTunes have sold 35 billion songs. 35 billion songs. It's good for Apple, of course, but it's also good for creators, because most of this, or all of it, actually, is legal offerings. If we go into the online world uh, more closely here in Europe, we have something called the Dutch online newspaper called Blendel. They have over 500,000 subscribers, most of them under 35. Culture also helps to connect with youth. We also have crowdfunding sites like Kiss Kiss Bank Bank. I know it's a super cool name, but go out and check it out because they have funded around 58 million euros for over 23,000 creative projects since 2010. One big discussion that we have here today is whether digital revenue has been driving out or has been able to supplant analog revenue or non-digital revenue. There has been a study by PricewaterCooperhouse about a year ago which says that digital media and online services created 34 billion euros in revenue increase for the creative sector between 2003 and 2013. This can then be seen towards the negative trend of non-digital revenue, where the losses have been estimated at 14 billion euros. <clears throat> so basically what they're saying is that the gains in digital are outweighing the losses in analog. This is an open discussion, but I think what we can say is that the revenues in the future are increasingly driven by digital offers. One last example. The EU app economy, which drives new areas of economic activity and often relate to culture and creative sectors, this sector will employ around 5 million people by 2018. In short, culture and creativity today are intimately linked to online and digital. And the next steps in this relationship will also, of course, need to include dimensions such as big data, constant connectivity, and the increase in consumption that has been said here before, increasing consumption of basically everything on mobile devices. But we also need to, to think about how we in the EU can help to reach out and ensure the vital diversity in what we in Europe with very good reason hold very dear and culture. How can we help culture to reach out? Our new copyright proposal we believe is one part of the answer. In our view, this becomes particularly relevant when we talk about collections that are out of commerce. 
by which I mean works that are still protected by copyright, but no longer commercial available to people. We feel that these works still hold great cultural, educational, entertainment value that need to be preserved, but also disseminating. But there is, or there are, very high transaction costs that cultural heritage institutions incur to clear the relevant licensing rights when they digitize and disseminate other commerce works. We would question whether some of these charges are reasonable and how we can make it simple to get these works out there. It can take a very long time for cultural institutions to correctly identify rights holders and clear rights. We have made some studies examined by commission experts and we see that it can be up to 100 euros in administrative cost to clear the rights for one single book. So, in many cases, institutions give up. The size of these collections that we have uh, to digitize uh, uh, should not be underestimated. In Europe, we have around 27 billion. Again, it's, it's virtually incomprehensible type of figures. But we have 27 billions of pages of archival records and 11 million hours of audio materials in museums, libraries, film archives, and other cultural heritage institutions. It is a huge cultural treasure that should not be locked in. Definitely lo not be locked in because of outdated laws. Some EU countries have addressed this problem with what they call extended collective licensing. This is what we think is quite a good model. But there also may also be concerns, and very recent uh, cases in the Court of Justice have shown this. There may also be concerns uh, to uh, individual rights holders. They have legitimate concerns about the use of their works. They should be able, we think, and this is in our proposal, to opt out from collective licensing if they want to do so, and have certain safeguards. So this is why our proposal favors a copyright licensing system with cross-border effect that covers entire collections, but also give rights holders full legal certainty. It has been spoken about here before, Digital preservation, I remember the floppy disk that you showed, Paul. I actually worked at IBM when we changed from this floppy disk to the other floppy disk, which was a little bit smaller at the time. Great times, I can tell you. Anyway, going back to my speech. Digital preservation is also a continual process rather than a series of occasional interventions that has been said here before. And this is why we have introduced in our copyright proposal a mandatory harmonized exception for preservation purposes. Mandatory harmonized exception for preservation purposes across the European Union so that cultural and heritage institutions can do format shifts, they can do floppies, sorry, copies rather than floppies, <laughs> not any longer on floppy disks as they wish. Today's copyright rules were made for the analog world. They should definitely be adapted and reflect the realities of the digital age that I mentioned in the beginning of my speech. 20 years ago, Bill Gates wrote an essay called Content is King. He said, content is where I expect much of the real money will be made on the internet, just as it was in broadcasting. I think Gates, as usual, by the way, got it about right. Quality content will always be in demand. So my second point today is this. It has to be easy for archives, museums, libraries to carry out mass digitization and to disseminate the works. Out of commerce play a full role in this and they must be available and accessible online. More generally, our aim with the copyright reform is to help consumers and creators by widening access to content. Some other examples that we have in our proposal. We have portability, cross-border portability in our copyright proposal. You can take your legally bought content with you wherever you go in Europe. This is not possible today because of copyright reason. We also address other areas that I, <clears throat> outside of the, uh, of the preservation exception that I mentioned. Also education exceptions, text and data mining exceptions, but we also look at um, the conditions for remunerating authors and creators and getting a fair share of the value generated, whether it be on platforms or whether it be inside the creative sectors. We have put in to our proposal a certain number of tools to help this to go forward. So my third point is this. The copyright package is finely balanced between several legitimate and important interests, but it aims to provide a good choice 
from legal sources and more content to our people. We think this is good for cultural diversity, culture matters, and it will, get, uh, and it will help to get people back on track for paying for quality content. It will help them to pull them away from uh, areas like piracy or other gray areas like using VPNs to get access to content. VPN is that little app that you put into your iPad so that it changes the IP address that you can go into the United States, you can go from Germany to Austria, or anywhere you want basically to get access to content. And a lot of people are doing this today. 20% of internet users are doing this today. Over 60% of film viewers actually download films every week. It is a problem. Piracy is a problem. And we need to make something uh, to, uh, to address this issue. We think that easier digitization, better access, and dissemination of our great culture are part of that story. The European Union, and I end here, is much more than a free trade zone and an economic community. It is also a very richly diverse cultural society. Awareness of our cultural heritage is vital if it is to be preserved for future generations. But, and this is again my final point, without digitization and dissemination, Europe's cultural heritage may start to lose its relevance. It will stay locked in, and we will all lose out on innovative services and creativity. And that is something we cannot allow to happen. Thank you so much for giving me the floor. Elisabeth Nigemann, German National Library. We met. Um, you mentioned, yes, we did in <laughs> Brussels. Um, hello again. So you mentioned the out of um, um, print uh, out works of commerce, yes. and out of uh, commerce works. And um, yesterday there was the decision um, concerning the French uh, solution to that. Could you please comment a little bit? You mentioned the Scandinavian um, way to deal with it. You know that in Germany we have a very nice legislation in place which is now in trouble because of the foggy vote um, uh, decisions. Um, so um, I'm really scared. I'm, I'm wondering what will happen to legislation like the German legislation in that case. I would really like to hear from you what you think will happen to all these national um, regulations. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a, it's a little bit too early. The, the decision from the court came yesterday. It was a French case and uh, it, it gives more possibilities to, to authors to, uh, to block, if you will, type of collective licensing. This, this basically was the case. I think we need to, we need to um, analyze it <clears throat> a little bit more. We have given the court case to our legal experts. They would take a little bit of time. Legal experts somehow takes time. I don't know why, but they do. And they will take a little bit of time to look at how this fits in with our proposal. Uh, so I can't make any particular comments on it now. Uh, when it comes to other types of, of issues that have been uh, raised by the courts, uh, such as the German book support system and things like this, uh, we have introduced what we think is a solution to this issue in our copyright proposal. Uh, so we are trying to help the sector uh, to, uh, to find back, if you will, these different resources. Our proposal is, is not a harmonized proposal in the extended collective licensing, it gives a very good possibility, a good model to use. So this is what we're trying to do. And when it comes to preservation though, however, this will change national law because it's a directly harmonizing uh, type of exception that we are introducing. The other ones are there to make licensing easier.